Hi there, welcome to Camping Secrets. Can you believe the weather? It's September and it's the hottest time of the year. It's unbelievable. And we've got a brand new product from Jackery to welcome this weather. It's the new solar generator, 300 plus. This is a mini power pack, 300 watts capable. So similar to the EcoFlow River 2, similar to the Bluetti EB3A, similar to the All Powers S300. But where this is different, it comes with a tiny little solar panel, 40 watt solar panel, which is perfect for days like this. And it's got Jackery's usual really solid performance, 300 watts of output power, which can flex up to 600 watts, 288 watt hours of uh, capacity, lithium ion phosphate battery technology for multiple charge discharge cycles five-year warranty smartphone app ultra quiet charging basically everything you want in a little power pack and it's retailing for a starter early bird price at 349 pounds 99 on jackery's website so we're going to get it unboxed then we're going to put it through some tests and i'll be coming back in a week or so after doing those tests to let you know what I think of the performance. This is a totally independent review. I must say Jackery have sent this to us to look at it. They appreciate our reviews. We are totally independent and I will tell you if this is rubbish. So let's dig into it. Okay, I feel like it's Christmas time, even though the sun's shining, maybe we're in Australia. But let's get this Jackery 300 plus unwrapped. So, what have we got here? So first of all, instructions. And I'm gonna film this with my other camera so you can see close up what you get in this pack. So instructions, the typical little bag of goodies with the cables inside. So let's just open that up, see what we got. I do like with Jackery, yes, sometimes they're a little bit more expensive than other brands, but everything is immaculately packed and of the highest quality. They really do make the best quality power stations, I think, just so rugged and dependable. I do like the color scheme, the orange. So that's your AC kettle lead, I like to call it. Then we've got our solar charging cable. So this from the panel and then two different uh, DC connectors into the power station of choice. Now one thing about Jackery is that they tend to use non-standard connectors on their cables and sometimes it comes back to bite them a little bit I've found so for instance you know if they bring out a new solar panel or you're trying to use an old solar panel with a new power station they have to give you these converter connectors so for instance here this is the cable from this new solar panel the the 40 mini into the uh, power pack the 300 plus uses a 7909 uh, DC 7909 connector, but some of the older uh, solar panels use an 8020 DC 8020 connector. So you've got the 8020 here, then you've got an 8020 to DC 7909 connector like that, and then you sometimes might need to then use another connector to take from that one into a USB-C to then charge. So, yeah, I'm not sure why Jackery do this. Maybe it'd be better for them to just use, you know, an MC4 or, you know, X, XC, XT60 connector, like some of the competition, and just make it easier, because I don't know who's winning in this game. Um, user manual, another user manual, quick start guide, and then, Got some polystyrene protecting the little power pack. And look at this. Hey, hey, liking it. So it's like a mini 2000 Pro or mini 1000 Pro. 
it's so dinky, I like it. I like the size a lot, actually. Yeah, so I'd say, you know, roughly six inches. Well, roughly six inches by six inches and then nine inches along, I think. Uh, I'll put the dimensions on the screen. And it weighs five kilograms. Uh, it's about 11 pounds, five kilograms. Um, we'll go through the front face, uh, face in a minute. So let's just whack that down. And then the other thing in the box is the mini solar panel. So this is the Solar Saga 40. And it is dinky. So let's get this open. Oh, look at this. Beautiful. Oh, it's like a little road atlas or something. Really nice. Oh, it has a little output on. So I'll, I'll, we'll go through this shortly, but this is literally like a little book. Yeah, so it's got a little magnetic clip here, which flips off at the back. And then we open up. Yeah, so it's clipped here and here. Wow, look at that. Very nice indeed. And then on the top here, there's the output port. So this is a highly efficient uh, solar panel. It's 25% up to 25% efficient. Really easily to store. It's not heavy at all. There's no other outputs on it apart from that DC output, which is this cable into the 300 plus. So there's no USB-C on this panel itself. I really do like that magnetic clip here. It reminds me of a Kindle. It is like a, a Kindle sized device, but a bit bigger, obviously. So let's uh, talk you through the 300 plus. Um, obviously got a nice handle here. Now it hasn't got the lovely slow drop down of the 2000 Pro. So it, it literally just drops down. So that's obviously a little bit of a cost cutting point there. I don't think it's a problem on a small unit like this, but I really love the 2000 Pro because it's just got the soft close and it just drops down like that. Uh, this feels like there's a little bit of flex in it. Uh, you might not have quite the ruggedness of previous Jackery handles like the 1000 Pro or the 2000 Pro or the 2000 Plus that I've tested before. And even back to the old Explorers, which had the fixed handle, it's really, really solid. This one is fairly lightweight and I don't see any problems with it, but I don't know. It just doesn't feel quite as good as some of the old ones, but we'll move on from that. I don't think it's the end of the world. Um, the only connections and um, interfaces and displays, uh, everything is located on this front panel here, apart from the mains charging, which is down on the side. Now, the great thing about this is there's no external power brick. If you want to charge from the mains, you literally plug straight in here. There's no other equipment necessary and that is so good um, i think if you're looking for a small power pack definitely look for one that doesn't require a power brick and this is a good as place to start as anything uh, on the side you've got air input here uh, air intake and air outlet on this side i think and then underneath we have uh, four pads so that gives quite good grip on a table like this. So yes, it will slide around. You can position it where you want, but not too bad. I like that there's a flat top. Again, you can put another you know, battery pack on top or an, even another one of these if you want. So that's really good. Color scheme, excellent as always. I really like the orange and dark gray. And yeah, really good start, I think. Um, on the front panel then, so we have an on-off button and then the main display here. On the left-hand side of the front face here, we've got the a 12 volt output. This is a cigarette lighter style output, 10 amps maximum, unregulated. Uh, this is, you know, for powering cool boxes or, you know, a lot of camping gear uses 12 volt cigarette style. Um, so you cannot charge with that, it's an output. Uh, as I said, the power button display 
On the right here, we've got a little LED light, which is powered by this button. And it's so bright today, I can't really see much, but that's the light on, lights flashing, and then light off. So yeah, that's all working well. But yeah, the display is difficult to see. You have to put your hand around it and then you can read it. It's a color display. Uh, I'll go inside in a minute and show you that. Uh, down here, we've got the outputs. So we've got DC outputs on this side of the face and then an AC, single AC, 220 to 240 volt output on the other side. This side, we've got a USB-A, which is the 15 watt variant. So that's three amps, 5.2 volts. And then we've got two USB-Cs and they're both 100 watt. So that's really cool. Uh, often Jackery skimp a bit and you might only get one, but great to see two. Now, one of those USB-Cs is both input and output. So for DC charging, we need to use the USB-C. We'll come back to that in a second. And then on the right, as I said, we've got the AC. Now both the DC and the AC have their own independent toggle switches. So if you want to use the USBs, you need to hold down this button here to activate this side. And if you want to use the AC, then you click that button and then that activates that. There is an eco mode, uh, which will switch off all outputs after a set amount of time, say 10 hours. And I think that's configurable in the app. We'll have a look later. So that's good if you've, you know, you forget to switch it off uh, because these things will drain over time if you leave the outputs on. And that's why these buttons are here. It's, it's literally just to automatically switch off and conserve battery. Um, so what I did want to say is we got the solar panel here. And as I said, that's got a single output using a proprietary output. And then the cable here comes with it. Now I was looking around on the 300 plus and there's no input for solar. So how do you do it? Well, pretty simple. We use this cable. This is very similar cable to what I've used on the Solar Saga 200, the 200 watt panels. You just literally plug into the panel. And then, as I said before, you've got this variety of connectors. So this panel will go into other jackeries, but you've got to use the right connector type. So as I said, it's DC8020. Then you can convert the DC8020 to a DC709. And then there is a 709 to USB-C. And then to use this panel on this power pack, we plug in with that USB-C into that one there. Now, the great thing about this, you can charge with, this is 40 watt panel. This can take up to 100 watt DC. So you can use an 80 watt Solar Saga panel or other panels, um, but you don't want to go above that 100 watts for DC solar input. But you can dual charge with AC and panel together. And what Jackery have done is that it will preferentially use green energy to charge up rather than uh, your mains power. So I, I like that. So if you're getting really bright sunlight here and you're dual charging, all that 40 watts from this panel or 80 watts from another panel or 100 watts from another panel will go straight into the jackery preferentially and then it will just top up the extra bit with the mains. So at the moment I'm at 29%. I'm going to set up the panel. Now one thing I've noticed with the panel, which I'm not sure about, is that there's no legs. There's no legs on the back. So all previous solar sagas I've used and panels really from any supplier normally have little legs on the back so that you can like get it angled towards the sun. But this one doesn't have that. So yes, you can put it up on the table like that facing the sun, of course. If you want to angle it, it's more tricky. So I'm going to take this down to the garden and I'm going to activate the app and I'm going to see how much charge, how much wattage I can get in from the solar panel. So I've just been trying to get into the app. I've downloaded it onto my Android phone, uh, but it's one of these apps where you've got to sign up with an email address and create an account. 
And, you know, that's disappointing. Uh, other apps from other providers, you can just go straight in and look at the device, you know, without having to have an account. It just logs straight on. And I wish Jackery had that because I've just been faffing for about 10 minutes trying to get remember my password and all this sort of stuff. Uh, now it's not finding it, but I've looked at the instructions, which I should have done straight away. And to enter pairing mode, you basically need to hold down the power button. So hold it down, rescan. So I've tried two phones now to log in with the app. It's seeing the 300 plus, but as soon as I click on to connect, it says not available. So I'm guessing there's a bug in the software. This has not even been released yet. So I'm gonna contact Jackery and say that having, I'm having problems with the app. But it, that will be a simple software update. But it's a shame because it's so bright now, I can hardly see the screen. So I'm gonna put the power pack down in the shade and then go and film and try and see how much solar power I'm getting in. So let's do that. Over here, it's a lot more shady. So I should be able to see the screen. Scorching hot. Right, we've got 15, 15 watts going in. And it's a pretty bright day, so can I get closer to the 40? So now we just do some adjustment. So what I do tend to do here is just Play with the angle, 15 watts, so try it. still 13 watts, so that's 6 watts, so you definitely need an angle, I mean, it's really hot panel, it's Burst really hot sunshine. At the moment, I can't get more than 13 watts. 14, but nowhere near maximum. So that's dif disappointing. 15, 16, and the screen's gone off. 17. So I can get about 17 watts at the correct angle, but then I've got no way of keeping that angle because of the lack of legs. So, yeah, not the world's greatest in terms of solar optimization. And then you've got the question of, is it enough power? I mean, even, 40, even if I got the full 40 watts, my thoughts are, you know, that, that, that's gonna take a long time to charge up this battery pack, which is nearly 300 watt hours. So you, even with 40 watts, you know, it's, it's, it's gonna be eight hours of charging and the chances of getting that full power are minimal. So quite a long time to fully charge up. If we use the big, Just to test the solar input, I've grabbed another panel here. This is an all power 60 watt panel. This has got legs on the back. So instead of it being 40 watts, it's a third as, well, 50% larger. So 60 watts capable. And with the legs, the sun's coming down here. I can angle this one. Now I was worried about connections, but on the back of this, there's a little interface which has got USB output. So I'm taking a USB-C straight into the USB-C of the Jackery. And I'm now getting 21 watts. So I was getting about 16 before, and now I'm 21. So, you know, it's scaled roughly the same. So I don't see that there's any problem with that solar panel. 
I'm just not able to get the 40 watts today. And maybe it's because it's a little bit cloudy. It's really hot, but maybe the sun is not beating down at maximum intensity. So 21 watts with the all powers, 16 or 17 with the Jackery. I think that's about equivalent. But yeah, slightly disappointing. I wouldn't want to be charging this up with solar really, uh, with these little panels. Uh, if we can get closer to 100 watts, it would be better. But at the moment, this is saying nine hours to fully charge this up and we're at 29%. So to get up to 288 watt hours, another nine hours of this direct sunlight, it's just not gonna happen in the UK. So I'm gonna go inside now and just charge this up by the mains. I love, I love the idea of solar, but unless you've got a big array in the UK, as I've said lots of times, even on a scorching day like this, it is not the best way of charging these portable power packs, unfortunately. Um, but when you're camping, it can be good to top up with it, especially if you're not using too much power. But as soon as you're using it for kettles and toasters, it's gonna be really hard to replenish it with solar unless you've got at least 400 watts of panels with you. So it's a new day, it's a new loud Hawaiian shirt and it's a new day testing the 300 plus here from Jackery. Uh, I want to test what can we power with it in the home. Um, the specs are 300 watts of steady state power and it's got this ability to up, up the power temporarily to a maximum of 600 watts of peak power, which is pretty good for a tiny little device like this. So um, let's power it up and um, just go around seeing what, what it can power. I mean, it won't be an exhaustive test, but so act, turn on the device, uh, activate the AC and we're going. I'm gonna try this toaster. I don't remember what power it is, uh, but let's just see what happens. All right, let's go. Oh, oh, no, it tripped. So it worked for a little bit and then it tripped. And that's gone. Let's turn that output off. Let's try it again. Maybe the power is just too much. Yeah, it doesn't like that at all. Let's reset it. Probably blown it up. Yeah, 500 watts. Yeah, it doesn't like that. Too much, too much. So I'll say that's a... Uh -uh. So I've got big TV here, 65 inch and an Xbox One X. Um, I'm gonna plug that in and see if I can power this whole thing just off the little jackery. Let's pull that up. Plug it in here, turn on the AC, and let's see what happens. And because this is a pure sine wave generator, shouldn't have any problems at all with electronics. Yep, yeah, that's all going. TV's on, Xbox is on. Let's just fill. Drawing 160 watts there, and we're going. So that's saying at that power draw, we got about 1.4 hours of operation. Oh, we're up at 200 watts now. 1.2 hours. Okay, so you got about an hour's gaming there, but might not keep you uh, occupied for that long, but you know, it's not meant to power your house. If you've got a short power outage on the mains, then this jackery can keep you watching your telly for a bit. Okay, in, in our tip of a garage, got a few garden implements here. Let's give a few of them a go. Again, again, I can't remember what power they are. 
We've got the leaf blower here. Let's plug this one in. This is a real Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of garden weapon. Let's go. Uh, let's have a look at the display. Yeah, so that was about 350 watts and it went for about 30 seconds and now it's cut out. So it does seem that once you're over the 300 watts, you've only got a, a short uh, duration of time before, before the trip cuts it out. So it's not gonna power stuff over 300 watts for very long. And that function is really more for a temporary blip in power at the startup of a device, not for continuous operation. I was hoping they put a bit more headroom in there and that could have run for a little while. But yeah, that's gone now. So then you've got to turn the output off and then back on again. Yeah, so it's back now. Um, let's try this hedge trimmer. Again, this is probably even higher power, I'd imagine, than the blower. But we can check it out. Well, it's working, but again, that's going way over 500 watts. So I'm not gonna trip it out again. There's no way that will work continuously, but you know, it, it, it does get it going. In short bursts, it will work, but pretty impressive that a little device like that can power a big motor, even for a short period of time. Of course, the uh, this jackery is not for powering items like this, it's more for just charging gadgets and stuff. Let's see what else we've got that's a bit lower power that it might work with. Got an electric plane here, let's try that. Pretty good, but again, it was going over 800 watts. I saw 800 there. So I saw 500 watts there, uh, and then it cut up. So, and now it's tripped again. But yeah, pretty impressive. Something a bit more, uh, easy to power, just an Amazon Alexa. Let's plug that in. Powered up. It's hardly drawing anything. Three watts. No problem whatsoever. It's worth just taking a few minutes to look at probably the main competitor to the 300 plus, the Jackery, is the good old EcoFlow River 2. Um, sort of similar specs, this has been around quite a long time now, I've had this over a year. Uh, and on the surface, things are very, very similar. At the moment you can buy this for 269 pounds in the UK, and the early bird price on the 300 plus is 279 pounds, reduced from 319 pounds. Um, Size-wise, they're very, very similar. I'd say, in a way, if you put them this way up, you know, they're almost identical. And uh, yeah, the, the size is pretty much the same. Obviously, the EcoFlow's got that fixed handle at the back, and it uses an XT60 for the solar input, which I sort of prefer. Uh, it's a bit more of a ubiquitous connector. Um, input power for solar is about the same on both 100 watts. This has got faster charging. This is fully charged in about an hour. Uh, we'll be doing some tests on this, but the Jackery documentation says two hours for this. You know, and two hours versus an hour, yeah, that is fairly substantial. Um, so I think that is an important distinction. Uh, this is slightly less capacity. I think this is about 256 watt hours. This is 288. 
So that does make a difference, but we'll be testing the efficiency of this later. So you'll see how many of those watt hours you actually get. And then the big difference is this has got two USB-C 100 watt outputs, and this only has one. Um, both similar output powers, 300 watts, 300 watts. This can properly flex up to 600 watts by adjusting the voltage. Uh, so, um, you know, that's quite a nice touch as well. So it's, it's stiff competition. The River 2 is a very, very good device. I, I do think the Jackery feels more rugged, more substantial, more trusting in a way, just in terms of how it's been put together. I, I, this is lighter, this is three and a half kilos, this is five. It just feels, yeah, just more rugged, I think. I, I don't know, I mean, this feels a little bit more plasticky. But, you know, I've had no problems at all with this. Um, there's a few quirks, like the three pin is upside down on the front, so your cable comes down like that when you're plugging stuff in. You know, just an interesting quirk. Uh, the Jackery's got it the right way up. There's no flashlight on the EcoFlow, but the uh, Jackery has got a flashlight, SOS. You know, and that's quite useful when you're camping just to have a bit of light if you require. Um, as I said, I couldn't get the app working on this, but I'm very sure it's just because this is pre-production uh, version. Uh, it's not actually out yet, and I'm sure the app will uh, get updated very soon. This has an app as well. You know, so, I think we're reaching a point where, for this amount of money, around 250, 260 pounds, there's a certain set of features which you're gonna get, and all these companies are sort of converging to the same set of features. Uh, so I've got to ask, where is the next innovation gonna come from in power stations? It's an interesting time, and you know, who's gonna be the first to bring out something revolutionary? We can, we can but wait. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do now is do a full discharge test of the Jackery from 100% down to 0%. And then we can work out how much of this 288 watt hours do you actually get to use. So let's get going. I'm going to now uh, drain the battery completely uh, from 100%. Boink all the way down to 0%. And there's always the question of what load to use when I'm doing this discharge test. In an ideal world, I'd run it with a 300 watt load, then a 200 watt, then a 100 watt, and then maybe a 50 watt, and look at all of them and see how much juice is used for each of those scenarios. But that takes a lot, and I don't have that range of appliances which can draw those specific amounts of power. So I, I rather do it with what might be called a typical load. And for me, a cool box and camping go together like cheese and wine. This is around 50 watts. And so I think this is a representative load for this power pack. It's the sort of thing I would want to use this power pack for. It, as I say, it's 50 watts. This is 288 watt hours. So you know, it should last four or five hours of running this thing. So this is what I'm going to use. And then I can work out, I can use this separate power meter to register how much power has been extracted from the battery in the Jackery and used to drive this cool box. And this will tell us. And I can compare that number. It will be in watt hours. It might be 200 watt hours. It might be 250. It might be 300. It might be 350. Well, it can't be that because this has only got 288. It might be 200 watt hours. It might be 250 watt hours. But one thing for sure, it will be less than the 288 watt hours that this has in its tank because there's always efficiency losses and phantom power draws. Um, one thing to say though, the efficiency of this will always look worse when you're using a lower power device. If, say for instance, this draws 20 watts just off its own back by driving the screen, the fans and things like that. If you're only running a low load and it's running for a lot of hours, you're gonna be draining that 20 watts of parasitic power 
for a lot longer. So you actually you lose a lot more of the overall power to those parasitic um, loads. Whereas if I was running at say 300 watts for just an hour, you only get an hour's worth of those parasitic loads and the efficiency looks better. So if efficiency always looks worse. So I'm not expecting a really great efficiency with this 50 watt load. It's, it's, it's probably going to be 75%, 80% maybe. If it's over 80, I'll be very, very impressed. Um, uh, I, I recently tested an all powers S300 and that was down at 60% running with the same cool box. So let's plug it in and I'll come back when the battery's completely drained and we can work out that efficiency. All right, here we go. Let's turn on the output and plug it in. Fan has fired up, cool box is going. Let's just take a look at this. So you can see there we've got 50, 55 watts of output power. So we've got good calibration here, they're both agreeing. And then this will measure in what, what hours, how much actual capacity we can use. All right, I'll see you in. It's predicting four and a half hours of r lifetime with this cool box. So uh, it's five o'clock now. I'll see you in about five hours. See you later. 210 watt hours. So we've measured an efficiency of 72% running with the 50 watt cooler. I now wanna run a higher power draw and see if we can get that efficiency up to around 80%. So I'm gonna come back again to the TV and Xbox. This was about 150 to 200 watts. I've fully charged up the uh, 300 plus. So we're gonna use the power meter again and then charge it again down to zero using this combination. It will discharge faster than before, but hopefully we get more power into the power meter and better efficiency. Turn it on. So power now is 214 watts. And the estimated time is 1.2 hours. So I'm just gonna leave that running and we will monitor how much power is extracted from the battery. So uh, nearly at 50% and we're at 0.11, so that's 110 watt hours. So definitely looks like we're gonna get higher capacity at this rate. 230, almost 240 watt hours. So I've got the mains cable here. I'm just gonna charge up. Let's turn on that. And um, what Jackery have got here is they, A, they've got very, very quiet charging, and I love that. Even when it's as hot as this, it's as silent as a mouse. And then they've got an adjustable battery management system, which adjusts the time it takes to charge based on input factors like the temperature. So if it is hot, it'll probably take longer to charge or something, um, but it's just great that Jackery have thought about the different conditions that you could use this power pack under and then they adjust the behavior of the power pack based on that input. What I want to do now is just plug something in and try and run it so that we can see can you charge the 300 plus at the same time as using up some of its juice. So over here I've got a cool box So this, this will run off either 12 volt or uh, 240. So let's activate the inverter and then plug in the cool box. Cool box has started up, brilliant. So 
you can see now we've got 57 watts going out on the right hand side and we've got 200 watts coming in. So it does allow the dual operation like that. That's really cool. Now let's do the same thing and use the 12 volt output, uh, 12 volt input. So this is what I was saying before, a lot of uh, camping gear uses like a cigarette lighter. So this is dual source, you can use either. Uh, I've activated the DC, so now I should be able to plug the 12 volt in. And again, it's powered up. And actually it's less power. So 48 watts there for the 12 volt, and it was 56 watts using the 240. And that's probably because there's some sort of transformers in there to get the voltage to the correct level. Um, maybe it's more inefficient to use the AC input of the cool box. So something to note there, save battery, use 12 volt. Now just charging up from 0% to 100%, let's measure the time. Starts at 60 watts and, and that will ramp up to around 200 watts. So now at a steady state of 200 watts and about an hour to go. 99%. So the 300 plus fully charged from 0% up to 100% in one hour, 51 minutes, which is really close to the time that Jackery say of around two hours. Now, I would say that's a sort of middling charge time. I'm sure they could go faster, but I think Jackery have put a lot of research, a lot of R&D into looking how to maintain their batteries. And um, it's their opinion that a slow ramp up and then a 200 watt and then a slow ramp down uh, will give the most longevity for the battery cells in here. Um, you know, the EcoFlow River 2 charges nearly twice as fast at one hour, but I guess part of me worries that that fast turbo charging might have a detrimental effect over the long term. Um, so, you know, one hour 50, I don't think it's too bad. I don't think it's class leading, but I'll, I'll go with the safety first. So, first things first, I got in touch with Jackery and asked them about the smartphone app and why it didn't work with this 300 plus. And the answer is, this is a pre-production model. You'll notice the publication date of this video is about the same time as the Jackery is coming out. Uh, basically, I've got a pre-production model here and the app is not set up to work directly with that pre-production model. I've been assured that if you buy one after the release date, the app will be updated and will work fine with your Jackery 300 Plus. And look, I've tested the app before. I've tested the 2000 Plus um, and used the app with no issues whatsoever and it works really well. So uh, I've got no doubt that Jackery are sincere with that and there will be no problems. So let's take that off the table now and let's just talk through my thoughts on the device. Firstly, I do like the form factor. I do like the display and it's got Jackery's typical ruggedness. That's really cool. Um, the specs, you know, are pretty good. I quite like that there's two USB-Cs and I quite like that you can use the USB-C for charging if you want to. Uh, that's the solar input, basically. Um, 300 watts of output power, uh, which flexes up to 600, but not permanently. Uh, I did get cutting out. So it runs, you know, I, I, I used it in the garage with, you know, four or 500 watts and it would run for maybe 20 seconds and then trip out. Um, you know, and, and I guess that's to be expected uh, with a, a power pack of this size. It's never going to be able to flex that high for long periods of time. Um, capacity, 288 watt hours. And I did see a range of efficiencies. So 
When using my cool box of around 50 watts, I measured about 72% efficiency. When I used a higher power draw, around 200 watts, 250 watts, running my TV, my Xbox, then the efficiency was much better, about 80%. So, you know, between 70 and 80%, uh, I wouldn't say it's class leading, but it's pretty good and, um, you know, much better than a power pack that I tested quite recently and all, the All Powers S300 was down at 60%. Um, so definitely better than that with the Jackery. Um, so yeah, all good. What was my experience like with the Solar? So this is the Solar Saga and it's 40. I really, really like the design of this. It reminded me of a, a sort of Kindle with this nice magnetic clip here and then ease of you know, unfolding, really, really nice. But in terms of actual performance, I was disappointed, I've got to say. For a start, there's no legs on this solar panel. Uh, so in the UK, because of the altitude, with, you know, the angle we are relative to the, to the equator, the sun often is quite low in the sky. And you need to be able to change the angle of the panel with respect to the sun not only as it moves across the sky, but also at the time of year, depending on the height of it. This thing has got no way of doing that. I mean, you can lean it up against something, but then it, it doesn't sit. So you've really got to put it on something and then, you know, hold it in position, and then you're blocking a bit of the panel. And then on top of that, this is a 40 watt panel, so not very big in terms of power. I didn't get anywhere near 40 watts, even in really bright sunshine. I got about 17, 18 watts. And yeah, that might be enough to charge, you know, your phone. But you're never going to be able to charge this power pack up, you know, with 40 watts in the UK because we just don't get that much sunlight. And the fact you can't adjust this to capture that sunlight means it's a bit of a non-starter. Yes, it's okay to trickle charge your power pack, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm not even sure it is worth it. So you may want to look at the Jackery 300 Plus as a standalone. I don't think I personally would use it with this solar panel. That's just my personal opinion. Um, but you know, it can take up to 100 watts of solar. So you could use a bigger panel, 100 watt or even in the UK, because we don't get that full sunlight, maybe even a bigger panel on a cloudy day would get closer to that 100 watts input via the USB-C. Um, and then you've got the age old problem that Jackery has with their connectors. Um, so the connector on here is bespoke. It's a bespoke Jackery. And then you've got to use different connectors to connect into the USB-C here because Jackery made that decision in the past to use these non-standard connectors. So every panel that they come up with, you have to have conversion connectors to eventually get it into the power pack. And that's just slightly irritating, I think. I mean. Uh, and I I'm, I'm wonder if Jackery regret that decision now because they've got to make everything backwards compatible. Uh, perhaps it would be best for them to start again and just start issuing these power packs with different connectors, more ubiquitous, like an, you know, XC, XT60 or, you know, Anderson or just a standard, standard uh, connector like that. Anyway, um, what else do I want to say about this? Um, well, overall, I do think it is a good power pack. And as always with Jackery, it just feels so good. And uh, that does make me want to recommend it. Uh, so um, I'm going to, I'm going to say, yeah, I, I give it a seven and a half out of 10, I think, for this power pack, maybe an eight. Uh, less so for the panel, I think it, Great in principle, not much use for me. Maybe in a really sunny location, you'd get more than 20 watts. Uh, but 
I would question whether that's enough anyway. And really, you should be looking at a 100 watt panel, I think. The other good thing to say is the warranty. Um, it's a three year standard warranty, but if you buy the 300 plus off Jackery's official website, you get an extra two years. So five year warranty. And they are a reputable company. I mean, you can, you can buy so many different power packs now, um, but Jackery, yeah, they might be slightly more expensive, but you know you're getting a quality item and you know they'll back up that warranty. Um, you can't always say that with some of the other power station manufacturers. Um, yeah, well, I'm gonna leave it there. Thanks again for watching. I hope it's been some use to this. And um, if you're interested in buying one of these, just check out the link in the description below. Got a link to Jackery. Um, and we will earn a very small commission if you purchase one, having watched this review. Um, I've been Marky Mark. This has been Camping Secrets. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.